Sejam todos bem-vindos ao nosso TraumaCast, o primeiro podcast, eu acho que o único podcast do Brasil, focado 100% no trauma psicológico. Meu nome é Natasha Ferraz, sou especialista em trauma. Estou muito feliz de ter vocês aqui, sou a fundadora do Instituto Brasileiro do Trauma. E hoje, gente, a gente vai começar o nosso podcast com uma convidada muito especial, que até agora eu nem acredito que está aqui na minha frente para falar a verdade para vocês. <risos> acho que foi Deus aí que colocou essa pessoa aqui no meu caminho para poder trazer esse conhecimento para vocês. E essa convidada especial, ela é presidente do International Trauma Healing Institute nos Estados Unidos. E em Israel, ela é uma das grandes autoridades do mundo quando o assunto é trauma e também uma pioneira na compreensão do trauma coletivo. Ela também no trauma entre nações. Enfim, vou perguntar tudo para ela, que é super interessante, ela desenvolveu o um modelo ROS e uma técnica específica que chama IFAS, Emotional First Aid for Stress and Trauma, que daqui a pouquinho também eu vou contar para vocês, e ela é autora de vários artigos e desse livro maravilhoso do Trauma Cura, que tem tradução para o português. Então, estamos aqui com Dina Ross. Dina, I'm so happy that you are here. Thank you so much for being with us. É um prazer meu inteiro. Ah, e Muito. vocês viram? <risos> Que ela fala português, né? Eu vou falar português só um pouquinho, depois a gente passa para o inglês, tá bom? <risos> Fechado. É, inclusive, gente, vai ser uma coisa português e inglês aqui, tá? Não reparem, mas depois a gente vai colocar as legendas para que ambas as pessoas que falam inglês e português consigam entender. Mas, Gina, antes da gente começar, então, queria que você explicasse um pouquinho para o nosso público desse seu... É... É histórico com o Brasil, você fala português, você está aqui passando suas férias. Conta um pouquinho para a gente dos seus laços com o Brasil. É, eu chamo o Brasil um dos meus quatro lares nacionais. Uau! É, eu, eu passei para o Brasil aos 12 anos, cheguei, cheguei aqui Caramba. e saí do Brasil aos 22. Passei 10 anos aqui, mas minha família mora aqui. Eu vim aqui cada ano, por 20 anos, dois meses por ano. Uau. Os filhos falam português. Uau. E eles adoram tanto. Eles saem do avião e falam, mamãe, o cheiro do Brasil está aqui. <risos> eles, assim, né, estão vidrados. Estão passando isso para os filhos deles também. Uau, que incrível. É um grande prazer, né? Então, o Brasil, para mim... E, aliás, mesmo que morei no Brasil, eu estava em escolas francesas, né? Então... Uhum. O português que eu, que eu tenho é da rua mesmo. <risos> <risos> Mas é, foi, foi, é, é muito especial ter vivido no Brasil. Eu, eu achei que eu fui muito sortuda, fui abençoada de poder ter vivido nesse país que tem uma cultura, uma, uma alma muito especial. É, não sei, é uma bondade, uma humanidade, uma abertura de espírito. E a joia de viver, a alegria de viver, que é enorme, né? Que tem no Brasil. Sim. Esse tipo de, de maneira de ser sim, é uma sim. coisa muito importante, porque tem outras influências muito importantes, mas bem diferentes emocionalmente. Eu imagino, até é, porque você fala sete, idioma, sete idiomas, né? Falo sete idiomas, morei em oito países diferentes, quatro continentes diferentes. Uau. Então, as influências são muito fortes. E a, o que o Brasil me deu... Foi muito especial. Uau, que lindo, que honra. E é. vocês viram como ela fala bem português, é, né, não. gente? E é um país belíssimo também, de, assim, de umas riquezas uh, visuais, sim. de natureza, extraordinário. Sim, sim. Eu acho que o Brasil é um país abençoado. Uau, que incrível. É. Nossa, amei, amei. E, bom, a gente, eu acho que você também ter essa influência de tantos países é, tornou possível o seu trabalho, que tem aí um apelo hum. mundial, né? Então, olha... A partir de agora, provavelmente, ela vai responder a gente em inglês, não okay. tá, gente? Só para ela poder explicar para a gente em toda a capacidade dela e tudo que ela tem para falar. Mas também pode ser português, o que você sentir na hora, tá, Gina? Mas antes da gente chegar nessa parte dos traumas coletivos, né? Dos traumas é, entre os países e tudo mais. É, a primeira pergunta que eu queria te fazer é que existe algum debate hoje sobre qual seria a melhor definição de trauma. E eu queria aproveitar o quanto você é especialista nisso para te perguntar a sua definição. Porque algumas pessoas vêm defendendo que a única definição de trauma válida é a que está no DSM, no Manual de Estatística e Diagnóstico da Psiquiatria, que é uma, é, é uma definição que diz que o trauma é somente algo que gerou uma ameaça à vida, né? Uh, você concorda com isso? Qual é a sua visão sobre o que é trauma? Ok, so it's a complicated answer. Ok. And I hope you have time for both of them. But I'm an international SE trainer, a senior trainer of somatic experiencing. 
And we have, I think, a, a wonderful, wonderful um, definition of trauma that really abranches both positions. Okay. On one, of course, you have the DSM definition that trauma has to do with survival, yeah. uh, uh, danger of survival, survival threat. Uh, but it's not only to life, it's also to the, to the body and to the people that you love. Okay. So it's not just like that. But then also in, in SC, we have something wonderful. It talks about small T trauma and big T trauma. Yes. I don't agree that everything that people go through, like, oh, it was traumatizing. This is trauma. This is, now everything has become trauma, even when it's just, it's an abuse of the language, an abuse of yeah. the world. I don't agree with that. However, the small T trauma has to do with whatever left you dysfunctional. If there's any area in your life, small or medium or big, okay. that when you responded to the event, you did not have your full capacity and left you dysfunctional at some level, then it is also trauma, meaning it's something that needs to be undone. Okay. If we think about trauma as something that's harmful yeah. to us and to, to the individual and to society, then... Who cares? Small T trauma, medium trauma, big yeah, T trauma. Yeah. Let's just heal it and use all of the techniques. There are so many of them, so many wonderful things yes. that are happening in the world that I don't think we should spend too much energy on this struggle about yeah, definition. Yeah, struggle about the definition. Yeah, yeah I, I but, totally but agree. But also I agree that we shouldn't minimize the word trauma by just applying it to anything. Oh, you know, you offended me, so I'm not traumatized. You're yeah, traumatized. yeah. No. It's an abuse, and, and it's, yeah. not, it's not helping the cause. It's not right? helping the cause, and it's not helping the person who says it either. Yeah. Because then they are giving up their power yeah. of self-regulation, of healing, of being able to handle what's going on in their lives or in the world or what comes at them. Yeah. It's too much. Too yeah, much, I totally uh, agree. Victimization that's happening. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's because maybe it's because of that that there's a struggle. But again, SE is so moderate, it really tries to find the middle way. Yeah, yeah. You know, how to make room for really the incredible trauma that leaves you totally dysfunctional. And then to the traumas where there are some areas in your life where you're really not functioning, even though other areas are doing really well. And that's also taking away from your life. That also yeah. should count. So I think that's the so, difference, right, between uh, an actual trauma, so... Uh, some some areas of your life may be dysfunctional. You have consequence right. uh, and uh, maybe some kind of suffering. Right. And that's different from, for example, oh, you said something to me that I didn't exactly. like it. Okay. Exactly. Okay, that's the difference. And, and, yes. it's, and it's good to, yes. to make it clear so our audience yeah. know it too. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, how... How did you become interested in studying trauma? Some some uh, psychologists and therapists start studying that because of their own personal yeah. history. Is that also your, your case? It's actually the opposite. <laughs> really? <laughs> I didn't have any interest in trauma at all. Oh I was my God. totally disconnected from that subject. It didn't mean anything to me at all. I was a therapist. I was very interested in uh, transcendental therapy. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to help people get to their optimal uh, potential in terms of uh, spirituality and the wow. ability to participate in the world and serve the world and serve God and all of that stuff, right? That's wonderful. And then it came up, um, then I understood something much more important, that if somebody was traumatized, they didn't have access. Yeah to that transcendentalism. It yeah. was not pretty Available. much there. And um, there were two people that were influential about that. So Bessel van der Kolk, I'm sure you know who he is. And we actually, when I did the conference in Israel, we took Bessel also there. Um, and he did the report that I read that was really amazing. He really figured out the cost to society um, of trauma. Yeah. Children trauma, not only adults trauma, and it's very, very costly. So yeah. that alerted me. And then one of the, gi the giants of the field of trauma, as you know, Peter Levine, yeah. um, said something, a sentence that really changed my life. He said that trauma was at the root of violence. Yeah. And I thought, I have to take this to the Middle East right away. Oh, yeah. And, and that's what started interesting me. I said, I, I'm... 
SE is going to change the Middle East. We're going to bring <laughs> peace in the Middle East with SE. And that was like the big uh, flag that I was carrying. An activist. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then as I'm searching about trauma and writing about it, and I have a series of books, that's when I realized, oh, my God, I actually trauma is part of my collective history. Yeah. My personal family history. Oh, because okay. I, I thought you were saying about it, your, your culture background. No, no. It was historically we oh. ran away from Syria oh overnight God. because we were in danger and we were the last plane to leave before they closed the door on the Jews. Oh, my God. So that was like, as a baby, that was already something there. Yeah. And again, we left Lebanon very quickly because civil troubles were taking place. So I realized that I was really a poster child of collective trauma. Yeah. That my history was all about that. And that's when I started seeing some of the signs of it in the family. Oh, my God. Because they had to come to a new country with no language, with that's nothing. Tough. And, yeah, start all over. And, um, and also losing all the background, all the rituals that you have. Yeah. Except here's where we were very lucky – We had a very strong community life. And that's, uh, of course, one, one of the things that heals people's yeah. trauma, right? It changed everything because yeah. we never looked at ourselves as refugees. Ooh. We never looked at ourselves as victims. That's important. We just embraced whatever culture we were in and what was beautiful about it, trying to keep not losing yes. <laughs> the most important parts that we came with because every culture has some very, very precious yeah, your elements bound, bound to it. Yeah, your own culture, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, that part, uh, I think, to, to recognize how trauma affects people unwittingly, yeah. unknowingly, yeah. not understanding really what's going on. Yeah. And that's what makes people really judge other people because they don't have an understanding of that. Yeah, they don't know they're traumatized, yeah. right? And, you know, during the riots in the 80s in, in, uh, in, in the United States, I was so aware of these cross-cultural differences yes. that people go through. I wanted to have, and I hope one day that will happen, you know the same way you talk about the weather every day and sports for five minutes? Yes. Sports? <laughs> Let's talk about cross-culture. Yeah. Let's talk about understanding each other cross-culturally cross be and awesome. what happens. Yes. And then people really understand the baggage that each person is carrying with them. Yeah. It's very, very different. I think that's uh, your work is very pioneer in that sense, right? Uh, when, when we talk about collective trauma and trauma between nations. Right. Uh, I know that you did some work uh, regarding, uh, I don't know how to say in English, but Israelenses and Palestinians. Right. Israelis and Palestinians. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Could you talk a little bit uh, uh, about that? What, so, as I understand, uh, you, you saw your own personal uh, history and with, about collective trauma. And in, in Brazil, we also suffer a, a lot of collective trauma as well. We are right. a colonized uh, people. We have indigenous people, black people that are suffering uh, trauma to this right. day. So what could you tell us about that, that subject, about collective trauma and Healing Between Nations. Yeah, it's huge. I have a book coming out on that soon, Whoa, hopefully. Oh, that's yes. cool. It's taking 10 years to write, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it keeps changing also. But it's, um, I think it's crucial Yeah. because the role of trauma in what's happening in conflict is fundamental. Yeah. And it's not always understood. It's starting to become more understood. Right. Trauma has come out of the closet in the last... I would say 10, 15 years, yeah. including collectively, so that's good. Um, but to really understand, you know, what, first of all, what puts a collective in trauma, first of all, there's so many different things. Uh, oppression, yeah. slavery is one of them. Then you have all the, uh, the economical disparity between yeah. people. You have the wars, you have mass immigration that, is happening too fast and too big and yeah, yeah. the culture is not able to assimilate it. That causes another type of trauma. You have um, uh, the occupation that happens. Uh, different people are being occupied in different yeah, times. It's a big issue. And, and the thing about it that collective trauma doesn't die. Mm. It stays in the unconscious of the collective. And yeah. any trigger and that happens later on brings it to the forefront all of a sudden. And that's why you see 
conflicts exploding all over the place and you wonder, well, what the hell just happened? Yeah. And you realize it was a trigger and you look in the past and maybe two, three centuries before there was something that happened and the whole thing came up again. Oh my God. We are re repeating cycles as We're a collective repeating cycles too. As a collective that's what you're saying. Too. Yes. Whoa, yes. that's so cool. Yes. And it's called reenactment of trauma. Now we know about reenactment of trauma in individual yes. people's lives. Yes. But people didn't realize that it was also at the collective level. Oh, my God. And you're talking about this on your new book. Yes. Oh, my God. About I can't wait to, to yeah. read it. <laughs> the historicity of it. And you also see there's another thing that I noticed is that historically, you know, we talk about uh, in SE, I think you have talked about it, the trauma yeah. vortex and the healing vortex. Yeah, yeah. And historically, I see like these big waves of healing vortex and then trauma vortex, healing vortex and trauma vortex. Oh, my God. And I think we are right now in a big vortex of trauma vortex, like in a, in a kind of going up, and we can take it down very differently if we want to, if we really understand yeah. what's going on. But do you think we can break free of that? Absolutely. The cycles and Absolutely. That, I think that's where knowledge and understanding happens, and also goodwill, because, you know, I mean... I was going to say one of the traumas is for people, for a country not to have enough resources. Yes. But another trauma is to have too many resources that then foreign powers are coming and corrupting the country also, yeah. which you see a lot in different continents and happening in different continents. So, you know, hopefully there's enough of a goodwill because there's also a lot of greed and a lot of interest. and Yeah, lot people of have to collaborate, right? To, yes, yes. So that, that yeah. healing can happen. Yeah. And that requires, I think, an ongoing transformation historically. We're nowhere near there yet. We talked about the entrance of the Aquarian Age eventually. Hopefully, we have yeah. some movements in it, some movements that are happening. But it, it's, a, it's an ongoing development. That's my understanding. So my yeah. naive approach, <laughs> I'm bringing SE to the Israelis and Palestinians, and we're going to have peace overnight, was yeah. like, well, Gina Ross, come on, wake up. But at the same time... <laughs> My desire, my goal were totally justified and valid. Yeah, it's of course. Just needed to understand that it requires much more, yeah. longer time and different events to happen, and maybe also God's will. Who knows? Yeah, is involved in I think that trauma too. it's coming out of the closet, as you said. But uh, we are still uh, so early on yeah. uh, on everything we need to do regarding yeah. trauma, especially in Brazil. For example, we are the first trauma podcast in Brazil. And we are trying to, to make this knowledge more available for, for regular persons so, so they can understand what, what's, what's happening. What's going on, yeah. exactly. Giving but, them the, the language, yeah. But it's hard because uh, uh, most of the, the knowledge about trauma is in English, so they don't have access to that. We are trying to, right. to translate right. that, to, right. to bring to Brazil. Right. And that's why it's such an honor to have you here, especially talking about so... Um, so important topics like uh, collective trauma and healing between nations. Uh, what are your thoughts on Brazil? I don't know if you have any thoughts. You leave it here for 10 years. Uh, maybe your thoughts about what we can do as, uh, as a, a population and regarding yeah. our own collective trauma. I don't yeah. know if you have any thoughts about that. So, so I don't think only about Brazil. Because what happened today, my understanding, we used to think on oh, Israeli-Palestinian problem, Israeli-Palestinian problem, all of it, the trauma is there, there, there. <laughs> and today I say trauma is in all the nations. It's like yeah. we're done with. And so the, so the good thing about this is the remedy is the same. <laughs> the remedy is awareness, is yeah. consciousness. Yeah. And the awareness has to be at the individual level, and the awareness has to be at the collective level. Yeah. And so I'll talk about the indi individual level at the mo in a moment, but at the collective level, it has to affect the infrastructures, the institutions yeah. How can of we the do society. That? Again, is remembering, <laughs> but again, remembering that they are directed, they are managed by individuals. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it really comes back to each one of us, but not living individually in our little bubble, but living as individuals with self-consciousness about what we can do personally 
but with a collective voice, like spreading it, talking to others, yeah. listening to others all the time. Yeah. So it's very different. And that's where, if that's okay with you, I wanted to say something about emotion aid. Of course. Actually, I, I yeah. was going to ask you in a minute. So and tell us a little bit about, about right. that. So we don't call it uh, uh, IFAST anymore. We call Ooh. it emotion aid. Okay. Sorry fine. for that. Don't worry about that. Don't <laughs> worry about that. You have the information that you had. Um, and I'm very happy to have you know, the book in Portuguese, and we have that. Yeah. We have the emotion aid in Portuguese, too, so I'm very happy to tell you oh, about that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, so guys, read it. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, it's a video. This oh, one, the video, we right. We have the video emotion aid, but this one in Portuguese, it's actually uh, an audio images. Oh, okay. So, and, and it has a manuscript that you can download, so you can also read what you're seeing in the video. It's a 15 minutes video. It doesn't take very long. Oh. That's cool. It really teaches you how to regulate yourself. Yeah, tell us, tell us a little bit. Of, that's your technique, right? You, you no, created it's a, it's a, Yes, yes, but it's, it's based on somatic experiencing. Okay. So it's taking the ba basic elements of somatic experiencing and some of it from EMDR too. That's cool. So, uh, and from Kabbalah, some of it too. So Whoa. doing a little mixture to help people self-regulate on the spot. It's wow. very much based on... What I'm going to talk about later, how important it is to bring the body into the therapy. Yeah, um, it's crucial. Yeah, and that's really, I think, Peter's big, big, big contribution yeah. to the world yeah. um, in that way. And also the somatic experiencing, it's not a body therapy, it's a body-mind therapy. Yeah, that's important to say. Yes, yeah. very, very important. It really completes something very, very complete. It puts together a synthesis of what's available in terms of our brain. Yeah. of all the different functions of the brain. So so emotion aid, um, if every single person, think about that. If every single person, let's say women already, when they're pregnant, right. learning how to manage and autoregulate during their pregnancy, so they have babies that are born without trauma. <laughs> if we know what to do when the baby comes out in the hospital and the nurses know what to do in the AQ, how to take care of these kids that are born, you know, with a difficult birth or difficult yeah. conditions or drug babies or whatever it is. You take it there and then you take it to the schools. It would change it the, the world. Media, right? <laughs> exactly. No, but then imagine that each person has very, very simple tools that meditation has been trying to do for a very long time too. And the Asian uh, philosophies have been trying to do also. Yeah. And affecting us positively in some ways also, thank God, but we need much more of that. Yeah. So imagine each person having the capacity to autoregulate, meaning that they are aware of their emotions. Yeah. They know how to handle them without overreacting, without dissociating. Everyone without needed. impulsive behavior, without damaging the relationships around them. Yeah. So it, it's a very different way of operating in the world. Of course. You know, um, I'm a Jew. I kiss the mezuzah when I leave the door, when I leave the house, the, the mezuzah on the door. And what is that? It's a reminder, who are you taking in the outside world with you? Whoa. Which kind of person are you going that's to powerful. be? That's powerful. Yeah. And that's what autoregulation is all about. Who are you? Who is walking around yeah. in all your activities? Is that the part of you that is conscious and in control or the part of you that just gets triggered, yeah. gets traumatized and overreacts. That's so cool. So it's like a, a self-regulation technique. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know it yet, but I'm very interested. But it seems to me that's something simple that very anyone simple. can do. Anyone can do. Anyone that's can awesome. do. Not only that, this is amazing. Like I have children, for example, 12 years old, that were having a hard time taking tests. Yeah. And I taught them how to do that, right? They took their tests, they were fine. But then they came the next time, they said, you know, my friend Heidi was having a problem with that and I helped her and she's taking the test. <laughs> and I go, oops. That's so <laughs> Great. cool. Exactly, exactly. So it, it's very manageable. This is, this is the beauty about the tool. And I, again, I'm not talking only about emotion aid. I'm talking about somatic experiencing. Yeah. The essence of it is that it's organic. We yeah. actually have this mechanism of self-regulation. And your built, bodies. built into the system. We're yeah. born with it. And that's really what um, gave me a lot of inspiration to take this globally. 
Yeah, that's that was going to be my next question. Can we use uh, emotional aid on groups? We can use emotion aid on groups, but we can also use emotion aid in all cultures. It's very culturally viable, oh. which you can't say about everything. You yeah, know, not all the techniques for sure, are like for that. Sure, for sure. So this is very important. And why is it valid everywhere? Mostly because it's organic to human beings. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a technique. It's our own nature, right? It's not a technique invented. It's a technique discovered. Whoa, that's that's so powerful. Yeah. It's a built-in mechanism that Peter recognized yeah. and brought it back into like clay vocabulary. I think he's brilliant. What he did is brilliant. I, unbelievable. Like all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, I don't have to do the work for you. All I have to do yeah. is invite you to bring your mechanisms out again yeah. to work. And that was like, okay, if we have that, then we can go into global healing. That's where the whole information came. That was the download that I got from that experience yeah. of doing that. So emotion aid is one of the tools. There are many tools. It's not the only one. There's so many ways. The EFT, all the tapping, all the EMDR is yeah. doing stuff. There's a lot too. of techniques. And maybe that's why sometimes uh, we, we therapists and psychologists, we get a little lost. Oh, my God, Confused, what, what are right, going to study? Right, right, uh, what are your right. recommendations on, the, on this regard? Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, you know, I mean, you know me. I speak seven languages. I lived in eight different countries. I want all the techniques. Right? <laughs> so but, I can relate to but, that. Yeah, yeah. But because every technique has its own genius, has its own wisdom. Yeah. It's relating to a different channel of experience. You know, we have the emotion, the thinking, the behavior, the... Five senses, the physiological, right? Yeah, in Portuguese, we call it saibam. <laughs> the saibam, you mean in SE. You're, you're yeah, nice. yeah. It's the saibam, it's my experiencing, exactly. And so each one of them is is uh, founded in one of those elements of the channels. SE is on the sensation, right? Yeah. Um, but you have music therapy, you have sound well, therapy. Music therapy is awesome. Have, you have movement, dance therapy. Yeah. You have art therapy with the, which is the visual, which is amazing, and I combine it with SC, and it's beautiful. Oh my For God! Children, How did it's you really combine great. it? Uh, well, just a little aside because I don't think our public knows much about it, but uh, we have the trauma vortex and the healing vortex in SC. Yeah. So the trauma vortex is whatever is not working, whatever is stuck, trauma yeah. stuck, right? <laughs> that's that's another equivalent to the word trauma is yeah, stuckness. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the healing vortex is all the capacity to work through something. It's the resiliency, the resources, all the abilities that we have, right? Yes. So we talk about in SE that you really is the capacity to really weave between the two of them, to pendulate between the two of them. That is the essence of healing. Yes. So you're not stuck in either one of the parameters, right? Right. And there you have, for example, a child, you... you draw the, the infinite sign for them, and you have them draw everything that's bad and negative in the trauma vortex and everything that's good in the healing vortex, and you have them walk it through. That's awesome. It's amazing. I had, yeah. a, I had a, so, a, a commander in the army who did that with his soldiers. That's he created so cool. this line, this infinite sign, between two trees in the, in the forest, had his Soldiers walk it through and they were able to drop all their anger yeah, and all yeah. their frustration. And that's beautiful because I think sometimes uh, I see some therapists that get fanatic about uh, the, their technique. Like right. it's right. the only thing that's going to help yeah. people. I don't right. know if you see that too, but uh, it's important to say that uh, each technique has uh, its own magic, it's, right? Yes, and its own wisdom that they it brought was, in, right? Yeah. However, however, what is very important, I would say that people who are doing only talk therapy, yeah. please understand that you need to bring the body into it. I don't care how you bring it, just bring it in. Yeah. Because think about it. Daniel Siegel talks about the brain in a, in a shape of a fist and that we have the three brains. We have the reptilian brain, the emotional brain, the neocortex brain. Well, you leave the body out, the, neo the, the reptilian brain, so how can you do therapy just with the emotion and that one? Yeah. What about that one there? And that part is what reacts to trauma. Exactly. So it's, it's what manifests the trauma, yeah. right? Yeah. So I say the body has three functions. One is, well, maybe more than three functions. <laughs> but one is about um, 
telling us what's pleasurable about life, right? What works, what doesn't work for us. One, it holds the unconscious. Everything that got repressed can be brought yeah. in by tracking the body. Yeah. The other is the theater of the trauma. So it's difficult for people to get into the body because that's exactly where they felt it. And the other one is the body as the healer. And that's the essay part. The body as a healer that you can count on it. The trauma, the healing vortex is there yeah. waiting for you to just strengthen it and engaging it again. And it starts working again. Yeah. And that people take to that very quickly. Yeah, I was stuck on, on my own trauma for, I don't know, maybe 15 years. Yeah. I suffered with uh, domestic violence when I was a child. Yeah. And I tried everything, including talk therapy. But what really um, took me out of the, the trauma vortex was uh, the contact with the body and the sensations and as he... Uh, well, that was the definition that trauma is in the body. Trauma dysregulates the autonomic nervous system. Exactly. And all the autonomic functions. Yes. So you start understanding its impact on everyday life. Yeah, yeah. Why I can't sleep, why I'm dysregulated in my eating, why my... My heart is beating too fast. Uh, yeah. All of this stuff. Why I have issues with temperature. Uh, you know, we start understanding the effect of it, the impact of it. And so why abandon that place of the brain it's, that is fundamental? Exactly. So anything that puts everything together works. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's important what you're saying because, yeah, every technique has its own wisdom, right. but of course, if, if if we are talking about trauma, it's important to to, to bring the body to in. bring the body yeah. in, and also to be a safe uh, uh, approach. I don't know uh, if you if you right. agree with me, but right. sometimes some techniques I feel that they are uh, rushing too much in, into the into the trauma vortex, and maybe sometimes people get re-traumatized. Right? Absolutely, and it's very possible to re-traumatize people while we are healing them. Supposedly. Yeah. And that's why I uh, I chose to represent SE. Yeah. Because it was very compassionate. Yeah. Because it does something called titration. You yes. understand what that is, which you take little pieces of trauma at a time. You yeah. don't overwhelm the system. And they actually did a meta-analysis. I don't know if you're aware of that. A meta-research no, that uh, while all those techniques were proven to heal trauma and were good at healing trauma, most of them were very damaging for chronic PTSD. Oh, my God. Because chronic PTSD was already in way, way overwhelmed nervous system. Yeah. And you bring this powerful techniques right there, right in the open, very quickly with all that energy. It's too much for the system. It just doesn't work. Yeah, and and yeah. sometimes I, I don't have PTSD and I never had. But for me, uh, some techniques that I tried w uh, were overwhelming for yeah. me and I get re-traumatized. But the good thing about it, that the ones that are intelligent, and there are, that they're bringing an SE into it. Yeah. They're bringing titration into it. The they're polyvagal bringing, theory. They're bringing resources into it. You know, it's really interesting. So, no, even the MDR has brought SE yeah, in the middle. Yeah. Meditation, which is one of the dangerous techniques yeah. for PTSD, has brought SE into it because they understood what was going on. It's really about awareness, you know. It's it's so sad. For example, when there was a disaster, they put people in groups and they had like a, I don't remember what they called it, uh, uh, what was the word? Debriefing. Okay. And, yeah. and, and it, was, it really worked at, at that moment. People felt like they were in company and all yeah. of that. But they realized it was traumatizing them more. So they canceled the debriefings. But no. Well, you didn't need to cancel them. You needed to titrate them. Yeah. You needed to help them talk and discharge, not just talk. Exactly. And so it's not about being arbitrary in the decision what works. It's really about being open-minded, bringing the tools together, yeah. see which one strengthens the other. My dream was to take all the giants of the field of trauma put them together for two weeks in one room and tell them, come up with the right synthesis. <laughs> Get your ego out of the way and come up with something that works for everybody. Yeah. That's my, like, if... Oh, my God, that would be... If uh, any of my wishes were to come true, this would be it. Yeah, I'm like, hoping get, for yeah. that, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's it more and more, more and more... Yeah, I, I, it seems it's coming between, together, yeah. right? They're coming together. Because the needs are enormous. 
Yeah. We can't afford any more the ego stuff. Yeah, we need to put the ego I just out did, of the question. I just did the training uh, for the military, and they basically said, well, we were too much in our ego before, but now we really need to heal everybody. So oh. give us what you have. Give us what you have. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's powerful. And I'm very happy that you're here um, talking about this because uh, what I always say for my audience is you can, okay, you have your technique, but do it safely. Study right. a little bit about right. what the giants of the field are saying right. uh, so you can maybe adjust right. something in your technique and do it uh, in a way that won't re-traumatize re people, right? You're absolutely right? right about that. I'm so yeah. glad that you're aware of this dimension. Yeah, I yeah. am. That's one of my big issues. I, I talk a lot about re-traumatization. I don't know if that's in English. Yeah, re-traumatization. <laughs> yeah, exactly. all the time on my Instagram. Yeah. That's one yeah. of our causes. And also, uh, and I was to differentiate between reenactment, yeah? Retraumatization yeah, is what we do. Exactly. To what we therapists can do to our clients. Yeah. Unhappily. And reenactment is when that stuck energy in the body is making them repeat and repeat the yeah. trauma. Yeah. And uh, because you said about reenaction, I want to ask you, uh, why do you think that occurs? Why people reenactment? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like uh, we are trying to resolve what what? Yeah. We are trying to get yeah. rid of the, the charge yeah. that's inside of us? Well, I think it's it's a two-step answer. This definition is from Peter, and I think it's very it's a very nice reframe that we repeat in the hope that we'll be able to undo what happened. Yeah. Uh, but it won't happen without the awareness. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, and the other one is that this energy is stuck in the system, and this uh, the energy of the stress hormones that get released in the body to prepare us for fight or flight gets stuck in the system. And yeah. so you are having a production of hormones, stress hormones ongoingly yes. that keeps sending the message that there is risk, there is threat in the environment, even when the threat is over. Yeah. So it's a definition both, of trauma, right? Yeah. So it's both biological and, and it's also, you know, that more like a psychic understanding of it. Yeah. Yeah. A positive reframe of it. Yeah. And also, um, Taking advantage of your presence here, I would like to ask you something that sometimes uh, it's on my mind because of the work that I do as a therapist. I found that uh, complex trauma and developmental trauma is one of the hardest things to treat on therapy. I don't know if you agree. And Yeah, well, uh, again, I'm, I'm not very clear about the definition of complex trauma for different people. Okay. Uh, so if you're talking about developmental trauma. Yeah. So what we have in, in SE, we kind of differentiate between shock trauma yeah. and developmental trauma. Yeah. Except that most of the time they interface yeah. together. Yeah. So. And that's when I think right. it's the hardest treatment right. to do. It's the hardest. But also even developmental trauma by itself. But it, it, can, be, it can be healed for sure. And with something like SE, something with with the body, something with the nervous system, because it impacts yeah. the nervous system in the same way, but for different reasons, and we have to do different things about it. One is huge energy, and you want to take it down, and the other one is repressed energy. You want to bring it out first and then take it down, then release yeah. it. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a difference in the movement that you do, but the fact of it is that the nervous system is compromised yeah. in both cases, and, and you can... You can do something about it, but something extraordinary happened mm. in the last 20 years, I think. They did a decade of the brain research. I don't know if you're aware of it. And, they, and I know you're aware of the next sentence, that they came, um, uh, they understood that the brain is plastic. Yeah. Now, when I wanted to take SC to Israel in 97, people really believed trauma was incurable. Oh, my God. As, er, as late as 97. Yeah, we are only beginning Unbelievable. to... Yeah. In a country that was very, very cultured and educated and knew everything about everything. Like, it was amazing. So we really had that understanding, very limited understanding, that trauma, you got it by the age of seven, you're damned, that's it. There you're broken. No healing. There's you're nothing broken. you can do. Damage could, as some people call themselves because of it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And so what they discovered was the brain was plastic, which means that we could develop new neurons yeah. and heal old neurons until our deathbed, which was revolutionary. Yeah, of course. 
and the new experiences created the new neurons, the new neural pathways. But what was most extraordinary is that you could do it th just through imagination, repetitive imagination, yeah. grounded in the body. And so we have something called corrective experience in SE, which I would love to have enough lifetime to write a book about that. It's so <laughs> amazing, so amazing. But you can correct so many things so quickly. Oh and God. once you drive those new neural pathways in the brain, you start changing the evaluation of the self about mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a different dimension, a different platform to use now yeah. about how they view themselves and the world, with, which is really what we want, right? Yeah, that's what we is need that so that people have, can yeah. consider themselves healed. Right, right. healed and, and free and yeah. fine. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I call it the difference between healthy anger and toxic anger. Yeah, Healthy grief and toxic grief. Exactly. Healthy fear and toxic fear, you know, all of those stuff. To really yeah, all emotions are needed, right? We just need them to be healthy and not, exactly. and not, and not toxic, right? Yeah, not stuck in the trauma. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And uh, so I would like to ask you, uh, you have a very long career in the trauma field. You are like a, a, an inspiration for me. Uh, and what do you believe has been the greatest achievement of your co career so far? Uh, well... I think taking SE to Israel yeah, was something huge. very, very big for me. Very big. I've been doing it now for 24 years. I have trained many, many, many people in Israel. I'm known for being the SE person in Israel. Um, and um, we do things not only in Israel, in different places, but in Israel has a very special significance because we put together in somatic experiencing very different modalities together. They never come together. So you have body workers, psychotherapists, massage, yoga teachers, Whoa. with psychiatrists, with psychologists. That's so cool. It's a tough one in the beginning, but then they adore meeting each other. And then we put people like Arabs and Jews and, <laughs> and Israelis. Oh, my God. And, Is it tough on the beginning? foreigners. No, no, no. It's amazing. I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> and you put like uh, religious and, and uh, seculars. I mean, all the... Yeah, yeah, you know, all the people fighting each other. <laughs> and they end a four or five days course in a bath of love. They start knowing each other. I had no idea you were a normal person. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> My God. Oh, it's, it's amazing. Sometimes what you hear is like really incredible. Yeah, that's so and beautiful. they start realizing that what they all have in common. Yeah. Which is As trauma. And trauma. And the nervous system and the capacity to heal. You put those elements together, a lot of the crap gets away. That's so beautiful. I had a very wonderful experience I want to share with you that just happened. I, I just came back from Israel a few, a few weeks ago, and I did a training for a group called Sulha. Sulha means peace in Arabic, and it's a, it's a group, an organization that puts together Palestinians and Israelis together. And 22 Palestinians came from Ramallah and near Hebron uh, and another small village um, and also from a neighborhood in Jerusalem and some Israelis uh, to give them about emotion aid and a little bit about also I want to talk about my free from conflict protocol that I have, which is really important. Oh, that's cool. And um, it was very touching. First of all, it was a mess with the languages, right? Because uh, some of them spoke only Arabic, some of them only Hebrew, some of them, uh, everybody broke in English. I mean, it was really, and my Arabic, I spoke Arabic, but then it would get too complicated <laughs> when I talked about the nervous system. So I switched to Hebrew and then to English, and the guy translated me. I mean, it was, a, as we say in Hebrew, balagan, chaos, right? <laughs> A but good chaos. It, but it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I, I really, really became even more aware. I was aware of that already many years. But this was so um, tender and so on the spot. Everybody needs the compassion for what they're going through. Yeah, of course. And everybody needs the healing yeah. before they can talk to each other. This group is actually well advanced and they're talking to each other. But I remember training a group of journalists in Ramallah many years ago. And what they said, oh, my God, we all have trauma. I said, really? <laughs> Duh. And then they said, but, you know, I think we need to heal our trauma first before we 
dialogue with the other. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, that is so valid yeah. to understand that when it's needed. Some people don't need it. They're already ready for the yeah. encounter. But that's important to notice. That's that, very yeah. important. And I think that's what's happening here that we need to understand. Uh, here, no. Where am I now in Brazil? <laughs> I mean in the United States. <laughs> That's okay. You travel a lot. I had to You're wake forgiving. up, right? Yesterday I was in the U.S. So, so in the U.S., for example, you know, I mean, some blacks need the healing by themselves first. Some others are already ready for the connection to, to dialogue with the other. Others are saying, what are you talking about? We're way beyond the need for dialogue. And we need to understand that there's a need for all of it. Yeah. We can't blame each other for any one of it. Yeah. So my biggest beef is polarization. Yeah. That is what I, that's to me is the major impact of trauma now politically is what's going on. And it's going on a lot here in Brazil. Everywhere. I don't know if, you're, if you are aware of it. Everywhere, I'm very aware <laughs> of every teeny bit. Tin, tin, por tin, tin, <laughs> tin, tin, por tin, tin, yes. Entendo tudo que está acontecendo. I, I read very, very extensively yeah. on everywhere and different languages and all of that. But so I'm aware. So the polarization is really an immediate byproduct of trauma. At the political level, at the collective oh my level. God. Can you elaborate you a few? It? Yeah. So uh, what happens when people are traumatized at the collective level now, you don't have only the action of one individual, you have a, the action of a collectivity. That's so that means the damage is much bigger when they do something wrong, when they yeah. react or overreact or uh, get into conflict or get very angry or hateful or vengeful. And then yeah. you take them into the... The violence and the terrible violence and the wars and the conflict. So when people's nervous system and the collective nervous system is disorganized, then if I'm in trauma, think about it individually, if I'm in yeah. trauma, the last thing I care about is you <laughs> and what you're feeling yeah. and what your needs are. I'm very much turned to inwards to what's going on with me, my own pain, my, my own suffering, my own needs that are not being met. And that's really where I am. Yeah. Now, not only am I not interested in yours, but you are now my enemy. Yeah. I'm not getting all of this fulfilled because of you. Yeah. That's what polarization is all about. Oh, my God. That's powerful. And it becomes really terrible. It's behind all of the conflicts, all of the bad things that are going on in the world right now. So yeah. much of it is ideological. Yeah. Not all. Some of it is by greed also, but so much of it is ideological. So much of it is from past traumas that people have lived in their lives. Yeah. You know, it's really and the past traumas we can resolve, right? We can uh, be a better it's world. It's possible to yeah, resolve it's... all of it. Yeah. I mean, sometimes there's compromises. Sometimes there are places where we really the differences are impossible to manage. But you can learn how to live with that with the other person, um, keeping your firm opposition to what I cannot manage. Like, you know, if you're going to tell me that, you know, I have to circumcise my labias because this is what you believe in I'm not going to do that yeah. and I'm not going to agree for me or yeah. for my people about that yeah. but I still can see the other areas that they have in common with you I don't have to reject all of you yeah we can so. see like more colors not just exactly right? black we can and see white. The, the nuances yes, exactly the, I don't Polar, know polarize is about black and white no yeah. gray at all but I love what you said is colors forget the gray mm. put in colors <laughs> put in yeah. the whole scheme of colors that yeah, we have put yeah. that in there so that that would be interesting I think trauma is that's why you said trauma is in the root cause of the the violence right yeah and the yes and 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 um unfulfilled universal needs yeah, so of what course, I've that's added, true. so I have emotion aid, but well, I teach SC, that's one thing. Then I have emotion aid, which is with the Ross model, we can talk about it if we have time, how to take it to the na national level. And then, and I then really have, want you to talk about yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're going to talk about that, it won't take too long. And then we have free from conflict protocol that I designed, mm -hmm. which I think can be very powerful. And it's based on a lot of other people's work. And I don't claim any originality other than putting the whole thing together, that's all. Um, and so we looked at the universal basic needs that we all have. They're universal, like the autonomic nervous system, yeah. like trauma, how it affects us. It's universal, right? Yeah. So the universal basic needs is the same thing that the needs for, for example, safety. You mentioned yeah. about that. 
uh, about competence, about trust, about our uh, identity, about our uh, the meaning that we want to have in our lives. I'm talking about the psychological needs. Yeah. Yeah. So you look at the uh, at the universal basic needs. Which ones are not met, and why they why you believe they're not met? Generally, you blame the other, of course, not yeah. yourself. You don't see any part about you. At the <laughs> um, and then you come to a dialogue. You try to dialogue with the other person for a conflict resolution, right? So that can happen at all levels, between couples, between individuals and communities and nations. Yeah. It's the same idea. It's the same one. What I added there is that while I'm looking at my basic needs, I'm doing it with emotion aid. Whoa. The emotion comes up, I discharge it. I look at the other need, the emotion comes up, the anger, the this, that, I discharge it. Then I start from that place of discharge, yes. of self-regulation. I'm going to look at your basic needs, your universal basic needs, and how trauma distorted the way you express them. Yeah. And I'm going to look behind the distortion, what's really there, using emotion aid again to understand so you. Powerful. And then I can communicate with you need to need. I, I think you know, but your, your work, uh, it's really uh, blowing my mind because I think it, it's the, the, the only way we can exactly. uh, change the world and change uh, what we see outside and we say, and this is the problem with the world. I think it, it's probably a, a solution for that. Yeah. So I'm very yeah. touched by what you're saying. And, I, and imagine people from different background, backgrounds and communities and countries. Can do it. That's so they beautiful. They can do it, absolutely. I take now, like I've done, I, I don't want to talk about them in details right now. We don't have time. But I took a couple of uh, real conflicts that are going on with wars, and I made an analysis of the universal needs that needed to be attended to the oh people God. in the conflict. Oh, my God. That's and beautiful. if I had an ear let's say at the UN <laughs> or, you know, at the international organizations, they would have handled it very, very differently from what's going on right now. It's a field that I think uh, we need more people involved. Yeah, it's developing little yeah. by little. It's developing little by little. But I think the, the essential thing is to understand the universal basic needs, but within the context of emotional regulation. Yeah, that's Because important. Because if you don't have it, in two seconds, that's it. You get triggered and then everything. That's it. The whole thing falls apart. Yeah. All the wonderful plans, <laughs> you know, <laughs> rational, intelligent. We are going to achieve So peace. smart. Boom. It's on the floor right away. Yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, I've, I participated in a few things like that where I saw, and that's where I understood the, emo the need for emotion aid. Yeah, it's crucial, right? Yeah. So that's the Ross model. So the Ross model is about taking emotion aid into the 10 social sectors that interface with trauma, either causing it, healing it, or both. Oh, my God, that's so powerful. And so you can take to each one of them the information of what that looks like in their participants, their stories. So each book has its own example, set of examples. And then, for example, how you bring emotion aid. So a commander bringing emotion aid to his soldier is different from the doctor or the nurse bringing the emotion aid to the patient yeah. or from the teacher to the student. It's still the same tool, the same ability, but different still different context. languaging, different context, different way of approaching it. Yeah, of course. So if, you, if you're able to take that language of understanding trauma, how to heal it, and also how to prevent it, which is what I want to talk about, yeah, that's then you have it at, at, at all of the social sector levels. Now you have a national language Whoa. to talk about something that's impacting everybody. As my doctor said, trauma is the middle name of all of us now. Oh, my God, yeah. It was such a beautiful yeah. expression. Yeah, that's my dream. Maybe we can achieve uh, first cities, then countries, then the whole globe yeah. Yeah. being uh, trauma-informed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. that's, I think that's... Trauma-informed, exactly. Now, the beautiful thing about it also is that you can exercise the, way same, the same way you exercise your physical muscles. You can exercise your emotional muscles. Yeah. And so when you learn how to do emotion aid, for example, on a daily basis, in your everyday life, we do something called brushing your nervous system. I love that expression. <laughs> we came up yeah. with something. We have an MP3. It's a little uh, audio that guides you how to brush your nervous system every That's night. That's so cool. The yeah. name. So you're preventing trauma. What does that mean? That your nervous system now 
is back to homeostasis, is not filled up with all this yeah, activation. It's more resilient. doesn't get triggered just like that chick chack and, and you have much more container to handle difficult situations, difficult emotions, compromise yeah. positions, everything. It expands the, the window of tolerance, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Opens it up completely. And now you have the capacity to prevent trauma because of that. Th that's powerful. Um, do you have trainings on emotional weight? How can we learn yeah, the we technique? We have trainings. We have trainings. I have one-day trainings for the public. Uh, I have also the book, and I have also the video. Like, it's very reinforced. They really can do it. And I get, like, I tell my, I tell my students to tell their clients about it, and then their clients report that they're using it, or their parents, or their family, or, or somebody's using yes. it effectively. It's always a pleasure to hear that, right? Oh, that's so, so cool. it's really nice. Um, and then I have, like, a two days training or three days training for the people who deliver the care, the nurses, the paramedics, the commanders, yeah. the, um, uh, the firefighters, the policemen, That's awesome. the emergency people. All in English, I imagine, right? I, uh, well, no, we, we have translation, simultaneous translation. Oh, that's awesome. I do in Portuguese, I do in English, I do in French, I do in the languages that I do. Um, this, they're, avail they're available. There are other, I have a, I have a partner uh, in Israel who is doing emotion aid too and taking it to different places in Africa and Europe. That's so, awesome. we're, yeah, we're very active that way. And um, uh, then we have the collective, for the collective trauma, then we have a three, to, three days to one week training where you learn emotion aid and then how to apply it to the universal basic needs. Oh, that's and that's... Awesome. Transformative. Oh my God. I amazing. can't wait for it. <laughs> it's amazing. I would love to do a retreat here in Brazil. Yeah, let's It'll arrange be, that. Yeah. Let's talk about that with all pleasure, later. <laughs> with all pleasure, because I would love to do that in some nice, quaint, beautiful yeah. Brazil, Brazil, everything that Brazil has to bring. You know, the nice thing about Peter is that he loves Brazil. So we could come here as often as we could before, you know, for a while. Yeah. Yeah, he has a love for Brazil. The way he the came here a few too. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, he's uh, apaixonado. Really? I didn't, I didn't know that. Apaixonadíssimo. Eu também, eu tenho muito um, assim, um lugar bem especial no meu coração para o Brasil. I mean, look at you, just your smile, the way you are. <laughs> I, I, really, it's a whole different thing. You really come in, in the country, and there is a level of... <sighs> Uh, our nervous systems gets regulated. <laughs> what? The nervous systems gets regulated. O sistema nervoso fica regulado. Well, there, yeah, but there's something already there, you know? Like I. Oh, yeah. on the energy of the country, you see. And the way the people re relate to you. There's a, there's a loveliness. Yeah, we are a warm and. There's a loveliness about it, a warmth yeah. about it that's very, very heartwarming yeah. that I really enjoy. Yeah. And other people, other countries have it too, but in a different way, with a rough edge that Brazil doesn't have, uh, or with an intellectual edge like France, but, you yeah. know, like with the... But very smart also. I mean, the, the, just that's the beauty about countries, right? Yeah, of course. And my whole thing is that it's time for us to learn from each other. Oh, that's each beautiful. nation, each culture has the light and the dark. Yes. Let's, let's learn from each other's light and help take away the dark, illuminate the dark for each nation. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's possible. It's all graspable. Yeah. The thing about this I mean, project is huge and looks absurd, but it's completely feasible. Yeah, it is. And it just needs a, 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 an army of people behind us to make it happen. Yeah, and that's why... And people like you. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. That's why it's so important for us to be here talking about this. I'm yeah. so grateful for you to arranging time to be here. Yeah. Uh, I am very inspired by everything that you said. I, I, I am really feeling my heart uh, warm, and um, I think we can, like you said, with an army, uh, change this world and make this knowledge available for the... the There's a little army of SE people in Brazil already yeah, working. Yeah, yeah, there is. I mean, it, it really exploded in Brazil. It's really wonderful to see. But Brazil is huge. Yeah, I mean, that's... You need a lot. I you think we, lot. it's huge, but it, it, it is still on a bubble, right? Because Brazil right. is uh, enorm, gigante. It's, I don't know how to say it in English. I forgot the word. Right. Brazil gigantic. is grande. Gigantic. gigantic. Yeah. Brazil is so big. And I think it's also important to, to bring this knowledge to the regular people that 
don't know what it's happening inside of them. And that's what we are trying to do, to make this available. And also uh, on our institute, we are trying to, to reach uh, the government and change some uh, political uh, laws and everything yeah. so we can bring uh, the, some uh, trauma therapies into our uh, health system. Um, there, there, is, there is work being done, but it needs to be elevated so much more. Yeah, it yeah. needs to be understood. But I think it's really, it's really the media that can help take that on. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know if you're going to have time for that, but I know you have a lot of thoughts on about media. <laughs> I have a book for the media, by the way, and yeah. it's for free in ebook form for all journalists. You know, that's cool. It's really understanding how to approach the issue of trauma. And, but more importantly, I think, than approaching the issue of trauma is how to recognize how their own trauma lenses impact their reporting yeah, and the impact that they have that they're not really aware of and the immense benefit that they can bring to the world. Yeah. Immense. Yeah, if they knew it. And some of them do. Some of them do, but but again, it needs to be more. Yeah, yeah. See, the whole thing is like, how do you bring this information in the basic training of every single social sector? Yeah, it not would. from outside in. Bring it from in out from the beginning. Yeah, it would change everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm very thankful for you. I'm very thankful for you being here. And I would like to say, what final words do you have for our yeah. Brazilian audience? If you want to say some words for them. <laughs> yeah. So in a way, um, if you understand about the trauma vortex and the healing vortex, make sure that you're a soldier of the healing vortex. Do whatever you need to do about that. Get your healing done. Don't ever accept to be victimized and stay victimized. Do not develop a culture of victimization. That is deadly for everybody, for the victims and the perpetrators. It doesn't help anybody. Um, and, and do your self-regulation and understand what you're serving, what the bigger forces you're serving when you do that. Yeah. When you walk in the world, it makes me cry sometimes. Yeah. Under the umbrella of the healing vortex. Yeah. That's really where humanity comes together. Yeah. It's that. I really can relate to that. And it's a decision of every day. And sometimes we'll mess up. We need to forgive ourselves for it. Yes. But if the general intent, let me go for my healing. It's enough already. Yeah. That's so beautiful. As we say in Arabic, khalasna with the suffering. Finished. <laughs> That's so beautiful. And me as a, a person that has healed from the, the big part of the traumas that I, that I suffered, uh, I can relate to that because it's a completely different way of living and existing right. in the world. Uh, it changes the way you see other people. It changes the, the way you see the world. Uh, sometimes I get overwhelmed exactly. with joy and, and happiness and gratitude. And I am, oh, my God, what's happening inside of me? And what's happening is that I am healed. So that's it. And because of that, we can bring a lot of good <laughs> into the world. You can join your life force again. Yeah. And, and that's how life, we, we were supposed to live, yeah. right? And your life force is what allows you to fulfill your potential. And only when you fulfill your potential are you happy. Yes. Oh, that's so powerful. Trauma Gina, takes that away. Thank you so much. I'm so happy for having you here. Real pleasure being with you. It was a pleasure. Eu espero que vocês tenham aproveitado muito. Espero que vocês tenham entendido o meu inglês mais ou menos aqui. Qualquer coisa, a gente... <risos> Qualquer coisa a gente corrige ele na legenda aí. E espero vocês no nosso próximo Trauma Cash em breve aí na telinha de vocês. Um beijo, gente. Obrigada, Gina. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. E pro Brasil, todo o amor do meu coração. Ai, linda. <risos>